Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to the next lecture of our Selenium C Sharp with .NET Core course. I mean, in this course, we have been talking about Selenium C Sharp from complete basic. And today in this video, we are going to talk about how we can work with the locators in Selenium C Sharp. I mean, it is not very specific to Selenium C Sharp itself. If you're from Selenium Java background, this locator is going to be applicable for you as well. And if you are going to use the locator strategy in maybe Cypress or Puppeteer or Protractor or even in uh, like hybrid app automation with Appium, this locator is going to be applicable for you all these places. Because basically what Selenium is doing is Selenium is using the JSON wire protocol to communicate with the client library that we have written the code from that command, it's gonna take that command from the client, and then it's gonna call the server, which is a Selenium server, to use it to inject a JavaScript-based uh, command using the JSON wire protocol into the web driver browser that it has spawned, which is something but the Chrome browser in our case, and then it's gonna perform the action on that particular uh, Chrome browser. Basically, like how we use that inspect uh, element in Chrome, browsers, that's exactly what it's going to be using even in Selenium as well, using JSON wire protocol instead of doing the Chrome dev tool. But there are tools in market right now like Cypress or uh, Puppeteer. These tools directly use what is called as Chrome dev tool protocol. That's a different protocol altogether. So this is a JSON wire protocol and it's a W3 standard right now. I mean, today while I'm talking uh, uh to, to you all it is already selenium's web driver is already a w3c standard which means it's a world wide web consortium standard so every browser which is uh been created by the gigantic software companies like microsoft google apple or uh, mozilla they all need to support the w3c standard and so they do support selenium web drivers, JSON wire protocol as well, which is really good. I mean, that sets a standard for all these companies to be followed. But the Chrome DevTool protocol, you can ask like, why is this Chrome DevTool protocol basically exist while the W3C has already recognized the uh, this web driver uh, JSON wire protocol? Because if you can see many companies, like many browser vendors are now moving towards Chromium project, like Microsoft uh, has moved to Microsoft Edge Chrome browser, and Google is already using uh, Chrome, and Safari is using the Blink engine, uh, which is also more like a, a fork of the Chrome engine. So basically, they are all pretty close to that, except Mozilla and Opera probably. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, these companies are really, really using Chrome, and that's why they are also doing a sidetrack development, probably, who knows. Uh, they will also be incorporated in W3C Consortium pretty soon, which I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, this is why it is happening at the moment. And as I told you, the locators are gonna be exactly the same thing for any different toolings and technologies that you will be using, not just in Selenium, but uh, I mean, if you go beyond or go big apart from Selenium, you should be using the same exact locator. So let's jump into locators and we'll see how to work on that. So the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to just, uh, just use the exact same application that we used in our earlier video. I have not even stopped the execution if you could remember and see that. The test execution is still happening. The reason being in C Sharp, I mean, you know that you can directly drag and drop that execution line and it just works from there. So you don't really have to recompile every time, which is pretty cool. So just in time compiler is awesome. So, um, so now we have to identify maybe, let's say, if I want to identify this control, who knows? Uh, this is maybe, what control is this? Or maybe this control, maybe a combo box, why not? Uh, because it looks a bit complicated in here because there are some search text box like that. This combo box looks pretty familiar. So we'll go with this one. So if I inspect the element for this combo box, um, and uh, if I just see what this control does, you can see that you might have or you might encounter most of the application written by the companies will look pretty much like these. I mean, they don't really use any out of the box controls. Some companies uses the Telerik controls, some company uses the third party um, 
applications controls and some companies you will be using their own custom controls to develop so that it looks more uh, more generic to them uh, no company really uses the out-of-the-box controls because they look pretty nasty on the UI uh, so all these controls will look something like this I mean you can see there is no straightforward element locators for performing any action on these controls the reason being these are all custom controls and these custom controls has to be automated pretty well as well so in order to do that we actually need to uh, have to go through some of the pain point in automation which is which is something we have to go through uh, so what is it doing at the moment so let's say if I want to select a mango in in here so what I need to do is if I just do that click it and if I select mango like that it will be selected but do you think you can definitely go and select the mango like this so let's say if you want to choose maybe almonds you can see it has to be scrolled all the way to choose the almond or walnut something like that so selenium is not that intelligent enough to go and scroll the controls for you and then select the particular control it will never ever do that so don't even think that selenium is going to do it for you you have to do it i mean you need to give the command correctly to selenium that hey selenium scroll the con click that particular button thingy and scroll this particular this combo box and then choose the other control which is something but the walnut or al almonds in this case you need to tell that to the selenium if not selenium will never do it for you instead there are some tricks while automating the application the most desirable way of doing it because you can see that this combo box actually has an input text box over there you can actually delete this particular value from the input text box and then you can just type almonds do you see that it just comes up for us and then you can select something like this you can do this way as well i mean this is very very applicable in many cases as well because there are some controls which will be uh, ajax control which will be loaded on the fly just go and hit the back end reads the data and bring it for you on the fly so most of the modern controls will be ajax uh, and they go and fetch the data on demand instead of fetching everything for you uh, like i think this one no there are some drop down i believe i saw somewhere yeah this one see that ajax drop down but it's just an ajax it doesn't really bring an ajax uh, behind the scene the call but it is just a drop down but this one is a more looking like a more modern way of doing it and how about this one you can see this control looks pretty different as well all right so how to automate this this one i mean today we're going to see locators right in order for that we we need to go through different locator strategy for performing an action on this one so in order to identify this combo box basically uh you can see that it has uh, it has so if I just scroll all the way over here, we have to generically identify this control. If not, this automation will always break. I mean, UI is always a very, very fragile way of doing it. You can see that this control has got any generic ID. If you think, I probably think there is uh, no generic controls other than this one, the our display combo. So we'll see this our display combo is a generic control or not so if i just go to the console over here put a dollar x double slash and what is this it's a class so do of at so if you want to use a class you need to put a double slash which means you're telling uh the uh the locator using xpath to identify all the dues over here so you can see that there are 413 dues available on this page just crazy and within this do I need to identify a do which has a class name so in order to not do that you need to use this here symbol class of this one oh sorry colon single quote there you go and you can see that from 413 it just identified only one which is pretty cool so now I have this particular control and now I also need to uh, select a select this particular button for me over here so what is this particular control so either you can click that and as i told you you can also type a value on the input box 
so there is an input text box like that so uh, let's see if the input text box actually has any id actually it has an id as well like content placeholder one all meal combo awd actually we can use that as well because we're not going to click the particular button thingy so we can just go over here and we can use this input of what is that is that class sorry i forgot it now it's an id this control wow so it's working which is a very good news for us we can then use this guy to perform an action. So you can see that this is the strategy that you need to follow to identify a control while working with it. So I'm not really gonna talk about like how you can identify using a CSS selector or maybe ID we already saw, name we already saw in our earlier videos, but, but you can see that XPath is something very, very most probably you will be using it. There are people who says that XPath will be slower. I mean, don't worry about it. It's if you could able to identify the control pretty well in XPath, just use it. There is not a huge, gigantic uh, difference in performance that you will really, really see that, but mostly it will work fine. I mean, whichever works better for you, just go with that. So now you, I'm gonna go over here and just I'm gonna do a driver.find by.xpath of this one. And you know that this particular control actually once I want to type some value I need to first of all clear the existing value so that I can type mango or whatever so in order to do that I'm just gonna go over here so I was saying I need to clear the value so there is a option called clear in selenium which does the clear operation for us which is really cool yeah and then I need to perform a send key so if I just do a dot hmm there is no method coming through, right? So this is what I was talking in our last video that we can do either the send keys operation like how we did in that video directly or you can do it in other way. So we will talk about the other way this time. So what I'm gonna say is var it's a combo uh, control like this. So I'm just telling that, hey, uh, find element. You find the element for me from the UI and you set that value for me on that combo control variable. Basically this combo control is actually of an I web element type. So in Selenium, all the controls are basically of I web element. So nowadays people are really using the var type, which is an implicitly typed variable. I mean, if you don't really know the type perfectly, then this implicitly type variable is something that you can use, but don't overuse the var, var type because sometimes you don't even know what type that you're working with. But if you already know that familiar with it, just go with the var type in the C sharp. Uh, if not, you can use the, uh, the uh, explicitly typed variable, which is the I web element in this case. Yeah. Uh, and then you can just use the combo control dot we need to perform a clear operation. Do you see that? We get a clear right now, which is pretty cool. Once I do the clear, I then need to do a send keys operation of maybe almond in this case. So now it should type, it should clear the value and it should type the almond over there for me. So you can see that it has nothing at the moment. So let it be like this. We'll see if it selects the almond for me. Uh, let's select some value, let's say apple, so that it clears the value and types the value for me, which is the almond in our case. So I'm gonna go to the Visual Studio. I'm just gonna drag this value over here. And, oh, oh, sorry about it. I did not stop it because I should have executed the code from line number 29, but I'm directly executing it. So it throws me a null pointer exception, which is, which is correct. So um, we'll execute it from the start. Sorry about that. And I'm gonna just do a debug. So make sure that while you just drag and drop the hello thingy on that, uh, on that code, that line should be executing first. I mean, the instance should be created first. If not, it will throw you the null pointer exception because this is really don't even know what this line is all about. So uh, it has, I guess it should have, no, this code will execute, we know that. We hit the continue again. Uh, so now you can see that the combo control has been identified. 
and if I just do a step over did you see that it typed it cleared a value I don't even know so I will select a papaya there and we will see if it clears that value for me papaya is it gone there you go it's gone right now and then it should type a value which is almond in our case did it typed do you see that basically there is an almonds or almond and then it typed the value but now this nagging drop down list comes over there and we couldn't able to really really select that particular value if you remember while we did the autocomplete we had the same issue and we didn't really give an importance to that and we just left it as it is so let's not leave it this time at least in this lecture let's try to select this particular value as well in an effective manner so how we can do that so if i just go over here if i let's say if i just select almond uh two things i mean two controls comes in one is the almond another one is almonds it's confusing right i mean now we should tell them exactly what control that you need to click so almonds but if you select almond then there will be two controls coming in and you need to now choose the exact almond from that particular control so this is the most common case that happens so in order for uh, choosing the value let's do an inspect uh, element again let's see what is it coming through so do you see that once i select this value there is an li control or list index control uh, of that particular do element so basically if you see this particular li this actually comes from the same do control for me over there if i'm not wrong is the content placeholder content placeholder one all meals combo so it's basically from the combo box that's the parent window and from there it is actually selecting this particular uh, this value so i mean we'll get through that once we go to the custom control execution once we write that we'll write in a much much better way of doing it but as of now just bear with me this is the worst way of doing it probably but we'll fix this pretty soon don't worry about it uh, so i'm just going to do a dollar x double slash do of at id of this guy and we're going to do an li of you know we have a, a method called text where i can just select almond boom we get this value now which is cool so now i can identify this control using this selector and I can just do a so we cannot use this combo control to perform that action for us rather we need to do one more driver dot find element by dot x path of this one um, dot click which does a click operation for us which is maybe it looks like a crazy insane way of doing it but we'll fix this problem while we write this uh, custom controls. Don't worry about it. So let's try to execute this now, whether it's really going to select this um, almond for us. So let's type the almond first of all, because that's what web drivers can look for. And it selected the almond. Do you see that? It does select the almond this time, which is cool. So in order to select or perform an action in the combo box, we are doing three operation clear send key and click operation looks pretty annoying right i mean there are many cases that you might be doing this kinds of things multiple times in multiple different ways in many of the controls we will talk about how we can get around of these kinds of problem writing custom controls in our next video but i think this is what is selectors there are many different ways that you can identify your controls and there are many different options available in xpaths of working with xpath and stuff i can probably put a link below over here on this video where it tells you how to work with xpath in much greater detail i already talked about it a lot but again that should be enough i mean this as i told you the locators are going to be pretty much exactly the same and even though the technology changes at least that video will never change so that video i'll just put a link on the description below so which helps you identify or work with um, identifying and working with locators meet you in our next video where we talk about creating custom controls thank you